So I know that my fan base, the people who watch this video, are a very smart crowd, right? One year in Edinburgh at my late show, on a bit of a whim, instead of asking audience members what they did for a living, I decided to ask them what their PhD was in. And it turns out that about two thirds of you have got or are working on a PhD in some very interesting topics. And it's such a privilege to know so many fascinating people. And at the same time, so often the things I say in my videos are, they feel so hopeless. You know, when we're talking about corruption in the UK, around the world, human rights abuses, you know, we can send a few quid, we can sign a petition, but it can feel like there's not a lot that we can do. And right now there is something that we can do and what it requires is some brain power. So that's why I'm specifically asking you, like my, my viewers, we can actually do something quite important here. So Priti Patel has her new plan for immigration. And if you've not familiarised yourself with it, it makes the hostile environment look like a fucking picnic. It's disgusting. And before it goes through, it's out for public consultation. We've got until the 6th of May to respond to it. And because she wants to just steamroller it through and be able to say, oh, nobody's objected, everybody agrees with me, everybody thinks it's wonderful the way that they have put it out to public consultation is massively screwed up. So it's a huge, huge questionnaire, like, like dozens of questions, many of them um, phrased so that it like asks you, for example, like which parts of the plan you disagree with or feel might be in breach of other regulations. Like, so you've got to like understand all kinds of background information in order to answer those questions. And a lot of the questions are phrased in a completely misleading way. Like, do you think the plan will be successful in reducing people's ability to appeal their asylum rejections? And you're like, what do you mean successful? How is it successful to take away someone's basic right to appeal? Um, that's that's horrifying and instead of which what, what you're supposed to say yes I think it will be successful or no it won't we must do something more draconian than even this um she's obviously hoping that people just won't respond and or they'll misunderstand the questions and she'll be able to say well everyone agrees with me nobody's objected so we need to stop her from being able to do that and challenge this disgusting piece of legislation that is going to trample over people's human rights and and lives so here's what we can do. Go to the link that is presented below and you set up a login, it doesn't take very long, and then you respond to the consultation. And in order to make things even more confusing, there are multiple versions of it and depending on which bit you log in as, it will give you a different one. But the main one is the one that I'm gonna talk us through. You don't have to answer all the questions. That's the first thing to know. Don't bother answering misleading questions. And if you haven't got time, which is totally understandable, just don't answer things. There are three things which I think are really important that we should really, really answer. The first question, which just says overall, do you agree with or disagree with what she's doing? And there's a whole range of answers from I worship the very ground on which Pretty Patel speaks and soil myself every time she enters the room through to oh my goodness, I would rather eat my own young than see this sort of disgusting treatment meted out to people whom I love and care about and respect. Um, and obviously I'm paraphrasing, but I've ticked something that says strongly oppose um, and you're welcome to make your own mind up. Then there's the last question, which is the open-ended one where you can put in your thoughts generally and in particular if you have any experience working with asylum seekers, if you know any asylum seekers or if you've been through the asylum process, then you can describe what you think needs changing and how it should be done to make life better for people. And then in the middle are the equalities questions and in the main version of the consultation they are questions 40 and 41. Shows you how big this document is. Question 40 lists the criteria, like the protected characteristics um, in terms of discrimination in this country and they are, you know, race and sex and religion and belief and sexuality and transgender status and disability and marriage and civil partnership and maternity and pregnancy and there might be one other that's super important that I've completely forgotten about. They're those things. And it asks you to tick which ones you think this legislation is failing to uphold equality for. 
And then in question 41, it asks you which bits of the legislation do you think are creating this problem and why? Which already, I mean, it is a horrific way of phrasing things that is obviously intended to put you off. This is what I think. I think that this legislation certainly discriminates against women, so on the basis of sex. It certainly discriminates against uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people. It certainly discriminates against people on the basis of religion. And you may well have your own thoughts about the other issues that are raised. But then when it says which bits of it discriminate, part C of this legislation, um, which is called disrupting criminal networks and reforming the asylum system, so that piece of legislation says that people who have entered the UK through illegal means will never ever be granted the permanent right to remain here. And that discriminates because people who are underprivileged in any society, people who are experiencing the worst kind of abuses are the ones who are most likely to be unable to wait for a legal means of entering another country or a legal means of exiting the country that they're in. So anyone who is forced to use an illegal means of travelling around the world is inevitably going to be underprivileged, quite possibly, in one of those protected ways that we've just talked about. And to deny them the same rights as people who've had the time to wait until magically they've made some special rule allowing some specific number. They never even do this stuff anyway, but they obviously will be discriminated against. Um, also, let us not forget that when we're talking about illegal ways to enter the, enter the country, one of those would be human trafficking, and that might be into domestic servitude or forced prostitution. Um, those tend to be things that predominantly affect women, and so certainly there is sex discrimination if we are turning around and claiming to be disrupting criminal networks by insisting that the victims of human trafficking will never be granted a safe place to permanently remain. I mean, it's discrimination and it's also like beyond inhuman and disgusting. And then the other thing for that question 41 is part D of the leg legislation, which is called streamlining asylum claims and appeals. This horrific euphemistic language that just doesn't own up to what it really does. What that legislation says is that you must declare everything about your asylum case the first time you apply for asylum, which might be at the border, it might be at the airport to a burly immigration officer who you know nothing about. And they're saying, if at that point you don't say that you have been raped, sexually assaulted or subjected to female genital mutilation, things which would predominantly affect you based on sex, if at that point you don't say that you are lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender, which of course would predominantly affect those groups, if at that point you don't say that you are an atheist or a member of a minority religion, and remember that all of these things you've probably been told your whole life, don't tell anyone, keep it quiet, deny it, or even you're not, it's wrong, you know, this, this, this can't be true. If you don't declare those the second that you are first asked about them, you can never come back to them. You, can, you cannot put them into a second claim, you cannot put them into a renewed appeal. Um, and obviously that, yeah, that discriminates against people who literally have a legitimate asylum claim, doesn't it, um, for any of those reasons. So those are the things that I think are super important to fill in. But anything else that you have strong opinions about, anything else that you want to fill in, if you have the time, uh, please do that as well. And please, 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 more important than anything, just fill it in. Just fill it in at very, very least so that Pretty Patel cannot claim we don't care. And thank you for doing that and thank you for your intellectual capacity and being my wonderful, smart, interesting crowd that you are. And I will see you next week.